Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be installing this Dreamline Slimline 34 inch by 60 inch shower. So full shower comes in five separate pieces. Really easy to install, so I'll show you guys how to do that. So stick around and I'll get started. Now before I get started, don't forget to hit that like button down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave any comments down in the comment section below. Also, if you're interested in this shower and want to purchase it, I'll leave the link down in the description as well. So we first clean off the surface, get ready for putting the base of the shower in. Next you'll want to find where the drain is going to go and cut a hole through the floor for that to be installed. Next, I'm gonna just wipe down the surface. We did the flooring right before we did the shower, so I mopped the whole floor, get the dust off, and cleaned everything. So you don't necessarily have to do this step, but it was more for the flooring, so everything went down smoothly and there was no dust. Next, I'm gonna take some leveling mortar, and this is for underneath the base of the shower. Now, if the level, if the floor is unlevel at all, it will cause the base to rock around, and if you step on it, it will bend and could end up cracking over time. So what you wanna do is make sure that base is level and set in place. So you wanna make this leveling mortar pretty runny so that it will level itself out and fill in any spots that are low. Now our floor is pretty level how it is, but this also helps make sure that every point of the shower base is touching on the floor at once and it will support itself. Now this leveling mortar was the fast acting stuff. This is really fast. I didn't realize how quickly this will start bonding together and hardening. So I'm trying to work as fast as I can to put this in place. You'll want to put more water than I did. It was soupy when I was outside. By the time I carried it inside, put it down on the wood, it started hardening pretty quick. So once the shower base is in place, you'll want to vibrate this around. I shook it back and forth several times, and then I'm patting all the way around the base, trying to level out the cement underneath. As you hammer on it and vibrate the floor, that cement will level itself out and support itself. Now once that base has dried, I can test it out and there aren't any spots on the shower that are squishy or are moving at all, so the leveling cement did its job. Next I'll install the shower drain. I've already done all the plumbing underneath and it's going to be really simple to hook up. So if you're interested in seeing how to run that plumbing, I've actually already uploaded a video. You guys can go check that out and learn a little bit more about that. So I'll leave the link of that video down in the description, but I'm going to move pretty quickly through that part. Now I need to start assembling the shower. This came in five separate pieces, the base as one and then four separate panels for the sides of the shower. So I'm going to take up out two of those pieces and start with the back wall of the shower and work from there. Now you can see on this panel one side is much longer than the other and that is so that you can trim it to length and get it to fit perfectly in this section of the shower. My guess is they reuse these panels for different sizes so they make it available to fit any size shower. Now to trim this, you'll need a circular saw or I used a table saw. It was really easy to just set the width and run it straight through the table saw, cut it like it was butter. So I had no issues with that. You'll want to have a nice sharp blade or else you could end up breaking or cracking this vinyl plastic. Now we have it all cut to width. I'm going to start installing this and to do this, I'm going to use some construction adhesive. They actually recommend to use liquid nail, tubes of liquid nail. You can buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's, whatever hardware store you have around, you can buy this construction adhesive. I'm actually going to be using this Loctite adhesive. It's a lot stickier than liquid nail and it holds extremely well. Like even when the glue has not dried yet, it adds sort of a suction and sticks itself to the wall with the panel holding it up tight against the wall and doesn't allow it to move. So that's what I chose to go with. I'm sure liquid nail will work. That's what the manufacturer recommended. I just chose to go with Loctite. It seemed like a better choice to me. It's a little bit more expensive than liquid nail, but it holds really well. Now, another tip, do not go light on the glue at all. I think when I did it right the second time, the first panel, I did a little bit light, so I had to peel it off Put a little bit more glue on and then put it up against the wall but i used two tubes basically on each panel maybe like one and three quarters of a tube on these panels so you'll want to really put a thick bead around the outside and then on the inside you'll see i do a crisscross pattern 
and that really is to suction each tile down onto the wall and this worked really well but I found to do it even better is if you put a dot in the middle of each tile as well as doing the crisscross pattern and then one bead around the whole perimeter of the panel and that held really well had no issues once I stuck it there it stayed so make sure you put enough glue on this and it will be pretty simple. Now it's ready to stick it to the wall, and like I mentioned this first time, I didn't quite put enough glue. It held, but not as good as I wanted it to. So the next time you'll notice I put that glob in between each of those tiles, and that did it perfectly. So now I'm going to put the panel up and slide it behind the corner molding, and this is what will attach the two panels in the corner together, and I can easily put a bead of silicone down to seal those two together, and it finishes it off really nice. So once this is in, I'll tighten that down a little bit, but I don't want to tighten it all the way down because I still need to put the other panel in and we'll need to go behind that corner molding. So once I have this panel in the place that I need it to be, I'll then press down on it in every square inch of this area and it will squeeze the glue down and suction itself to the wall and hold it in place. Now I'll repeat the same steps. These two panels are really easy because they don't have any holes to cut for the faucet. So I'm gonna put the second panel up and then show you guys what this looks like for the other two panels. Now even once you've stuck this on, it will take a couple hours for this to dry. So every so often you want to come back to it and keep pressing down and you'll hear air bubbles popping and squishing up against the wall a little bit better. And you really want to try to work that glue in and make sure it's sticking to the wall as best as it can. Now once those two panels are in, the set came with a molding to go in between those two panels. So I'm going to put a couple strips of Loctite glue in between those to seal it just a little bit better. And they came with some screws to mount it as well as dowels to go into the sheetrock and hold it in place. And then it also came with these little plastic tabs that cover up the screw holes as well. So I'm going to put the screws in there, hold it in place, and then I'll put those plastic dowels in to cover those up. Now quick tip, have a wet rag on hand to wipe off any excess glue that squeezes out. Now that's another nice thing about the Loctite glue, it is water based so you can wash it off and clean it up with water. Before it dries, once it's dry, it's done, it's stuck there, you can't wash it off. But liquid nail is not that way, it must be of oil base and it does not wash off with water so it's a lot harder to clean up. So if you're working with liquid nail, just keep that in mind and be careful about that. Now I'm just measuring out the holes that I need to drill for the handles that are going to go through this shower panel. Now we're having two shower heads, one on this side is going to be the backup if we need it, it's right there when we want it, and then the other side is going to be the main shower head. So once we have that all measured out, I just used a drill bit and drilled through that plastic, really easy, and now I'm going to glue up the back of this panel and stick it in place. Now I'm going to put a good bead of glue around both of those holes to help seal it as well in case any water gets in there. And then you'll notice right here I am putting the big glob of glue on each of those squares. Now the crisscross pattern and the border glue works pretty well, but that extra dot in between each square works so much better. So it'll take about one tube if you only do the crisscross pattern and one strip around the outside. If you want to put the dots in between each, that will be another tube of glue. So it'll take about two, like I mentioned before.
Another quick tip, don't squish all of this up against the wall before you have it level. You want to check, make sure everything's level and in place, and then squish everything down. It's going to be a whole lot harder to move once you have pressed this up against the wall, so double check that and save yourself a lot of time. My daughter came in and was curious about what we were doing and she was watching for a little bit and tried to figure out what we were doing. Later on you'll see her pushing up against the wall. We were working and didn't see this until I watched the video. Super funny but she was learning and watching what we were doing. Now that the two panels in the corner are mounted, I can now tighten down that corner molding and clean this up a little bit. So this set came with all the moldings you need, the two corner moldings, as well as the center one down the middle. And it came with all the hardware you need to mount these to the wall, so you don't have to worry about that at all. It'll come in the set. Here's what I was talking about. She came back in wanting to help and be a good helper pushing on the wall and copying me and we both didn't even notice because we were working away. Now on this side we also need to cut the holes through to make sure the valves get through the panel. Now I'm going to double check and even triple check my measurements. I want to make sure I get this just right because if it's off a half an inch it's going to be noticeable and you're going to be able to tell later. So you don't want to make any mistakes. Double check. Make sure you're cutting in the right spot so that you don't have any awkward holes in your shower. So I'm going to measure that out. It ended up working out perfectly. So now it's time to glue up. Now I'm sticking the last panel to the wall and I'm getting ready to finish off the kit. We're gonna tighten down the corner molding and that should be done with the kit. The kit has been installed. I'm gonna continue on and finish off the valves and the shower heads on either side, as well as putting up some moldings and finishing off the whole shower. So I'm gonna start by mounting this shower head on the wall and this one's an exterior valve as well as the pipe going from the valves up to the shower head is all going to be on the outside all brass it's really pretty and if you're interested in this shower head where we found it you guys can go down in the description below and i'll leave the link for that there now while i'm installing this i'm going to first put on some teflon tape on every joint i want to make sure that this is completely sealed and we won't have any leaks so it's going to be a big pain in the butt if we have any leaks on these joints i don't want to have to come back and redo it so you want to make sure you do it right the first time put some tape on it and tighten it down almost as tight as you can get it and that will ensure that you won't have any leaks
Now that just about finishes up the shower head. I'm gonna test it out and there are no leaks, which is great, so I can move on to the next side. Now on this side, I'm gonna fill in all around these valves with some white silicone and make sure that's all sealed up. And then I'll put a white cover over top of these. You can buy these, they're just generic white covers for pipes coming through walls. It'll work perfectly. It's a plastic cover matches with the walls or the panels on the shower. So that white silicone, once it dries, it'll bond with that plastic and hold it in place. And it'll also seal it so nothing gets behind these valves into the wall and behind the panel. Now to finish off the shower, I'm going to frame it in with 1x4 moldings across the top and down on either side. And this will really frame it in and make it look really nice. So I'm going to use this 1x4 molding. I'm going to nail these to the wall, but I'm not sure exactly where the studs are on this wall. So I'm going to put some Loctite glue on and make sure that it's stuck. The nails will hold it in place until the glue has completely dried. So even if I don't get any studs, the glue is going to hold it just fine. Now everything's basically done. All I need to do now is fill all of the joints and make sure there are no leaks throughout the whole shower. So I'm gonna take some white bathroom silicone and fill in every joint and crack that is on the shower, framing in the moldings around all the edges as well as in between each panel, making sure there's no cracks. I'm also gonna take some clear silicone and seal around the brass fittings that are coming out of the wall and make sure there aren't any leaks there. Now the clear silicone will work best for this because it won't be seen at all. You won't cover up any of the brass and with the clear silicone it's almost non-existent. Now that is a ton of joints to seal up, but I'm finally finished and now I'm just gonna attach the last shower head. I put some Teflon tape on that and I'll tighten it down, make sure there aren't any leaks and then I can mount the shower head as well. So now all we need to do is test it out, make sure everything works like it needs to and then mount the shower curtain and we're done with the shower. All right, everything works great. We've tested everything out and it looks amazing. We're super excited about this. If you have not seen the previous videos leading up to this, we're doing a bathroom renovation and our previous master bathroom was just a tiny closet. The toilet and sink were side by side. That's all it could fit. And now we have added on to the back of our house. We have a full size shower. We have the toilet, the flooring, everything installed. We're getting ready to install a double sink vanity. I first need to build that for us and install that and everything. But we're really excited to have the shower done. If you wanna go check out some more of those videos, I'll leave the link down in the descriptions below and you can check out the other videos I've posted on this renovation. So thanks guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button. If you want a notification when I upload a new video, hit that bell icon and then hit that like button down below if you like this video. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next one.